We welcome everyone to today's hearing on the dangers and due process violations of gender affirming care Chairman, for children. I'd like to yield my five minutes to the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Matt Gates. Thank the gentleman for yielding. Um, Ms. Scanlon, we just heard my Democrat colleague, Mr. Cohen, say that your circumstance could have been fully resolved if we'd have just had some barriers up in the, sh in the women's showers. Do, do you think that that's a sufficient way to resolve what we're dealing with here? I think by um, Representative Cohen admitting that we need barriers acknowledges there are biological differences between men and women. And by acknowledging that we need to have private spaces that are separate from each other, why can't we just use the locker rooms that we've always used, the men's and the women's? If you're acknowledging that we need protection and privacy from these men, then you're acknowledging that the locker rooms we've always used are the correct ones. My next question is for uh, Shannon Minter. Are you familiar with the changes in law recently in Washington State regarding transgender youth? Uh, yes. And uh, as I understand it, it used to be the case in Washington State that if a youth showed up at an emergency shelter, there was a legal requirement to notify the parent within 72 hours in the absence of some abuse or neglect. Is that your understanding of what the law was then? I believe that is correct. And then the law changed where now in Washington state, if someone shows up to one of these shelters who's a minor uh, and says that their parents don't agree with them changing their gender, that the shelter no longer has to notify the parents within 72 hours and can instead notify a government authority. Do I have that right? The parents will be notified. There's no question about that. This simply allows for a delay in order to allow them to investigate to make sure this child is going to be safe. There's no question that the parents will be notified. How long should parents have to wait not knowing where their child is while a government process is playing out to make a gender determination? There's no reason to treat these situations with transgender young, pe young people who may be in danger or at risk of abuse at home any differently than we would treat any other child where we have reason, reasonable basis to worry about that and to investigate that. But it does short, treat them differently. A short delay to protect the safety of young people is always warranted. But how long is the delay? How long do you want a parent not knowing where their kid is because the kid says they want to change their gender? Just tell me how long a delay is you, you think is appropriate. I want authorities to treat these kids with the same care they treat all other children. No, but but it, that's, will be, it will be a short delay and the parents on, will be though, notified. Because well, you, you won't tell us how long a delay. So if you're watching this, just imagine you're that parent and you don't know where your child is. And the law now says there's a 72 hour period where the shelter has to notify you in that 72 hour period for any child of any gender or any circumstance is a period to investigate whether there's abuse in the home. But beyond that, beyond 72 hours, you gotta tell the parent. And so it's, it's really important to understand here what the uh, proponents of radical gender ideology want. They want to stand between a parent and a child on these important decisions. And I don't think it's abuse if a parent says, I'm not going to get my child gender blockers. And, and it's odd to hear you advocate for the law because just moments ago in testimony, you said, and I wrote it down, parents have a fundamental right to make healthcare decisions regarding their children. But, but if in Washington state today, the parent makes the decision that they're not going to provide that gender affirming care, what it does is it unlocks for the government a window of time to keep the child away from the parent and to not tell the parent where the kid is. Oh, please, get over yourself. What, you know, what, what's terrible is when you have a, uh, this, this incongruent desire of the government to restrain the ability of parents to parent. And I, I can only imagine the terror that a parent must go through not knowing where their child is. So um, I think that's really challenging. We've also seen in the state of Alaska, Title IX, which was established for girls' sports to be used as a justification to socially transition a child against their wishes. Ms. Scanlon, as a beneficiary of Title IX, as a female athlete, do you think Title IX should be used in that way? Absolutely not. Um, swimming did a lot of really good things for my life after I'm a, a, a sexual assault survivor and swimming was one of the only things that I had to keep me going when I was struggling with that. 
and to think about young girls that are not going to be given those same opportunities because Title IX is being reworked and rewritten for these new people that have different definitions of what a woman is. Yeah, I'm against, disturbing. I'm against transitioning children against the will of their parents, and I'm against transitioning Title IX away from an asset for women's sports Mr. to this Chairman. strange social justice cause that is deeply misguided. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.